Audio is very important in a movie, and Magic's Movie Edit Pro and Video Pro X have an extensive array of audio tools and features available to you that you may not even know about. Without going into any great detail on all features, as that would take a couple of hours, let's take a look at everything audio. I'll refer to Video Pro X as VPX and Movie Edit Pro as MAP. As most of the audio features are common to both VPX and MAP, I'll use mostly VPX to illustrate, but show MAP where there are differences. I've split this tutorial into two parts, as it's quite lengthy. Here are the topics for part one. And here are the topics for part two. I'll start with audio sample rate. On the startup screen in previous versions, VPX11 and MEP 2020, you could accept or change the audio sample rate. In VPX12 and MEP 2021, this option no longer appears on the startup screen. Video is normally at 48 kHz and is set by default. You can change this in the project settings so long as nothing is on the timeline. As set in the default program settings, when you bring in a video object, and I'll bring in a few. The audio was part of the object on track one. Expand the track vertically and you can better see the audio in the lower part of the object. Let's look at audio presets in the program settings. Under the playback tab, under audio playback, we see driver selection options, the output device which you can change depending on your setup, and audio buffer information. Under the Video Audio tab, Timeline, there is Half Waveform Display. You saw the full waveform, but I prefer Half Waveform Display. Next is Video and Audio on one track. I want them on separate tracks. Then there is Reducing Audio by 6 decibels when importing, which you can set if you want. Under Import is Automatically Create Waveform During Import. We saw the waveform, but you can turn this off if you want and then usually we want the video imported with sound. Under the Folder tab, we see a path to the External Audio Editor, Music Editor, which comes with MEP Plus and Premium and VPX. You can change this to another one from Magix, and I've tested this with various Magix programs like SoundForge Audio Cleaning Lab, SoundForge Audio Studio 12, and Samplitude Pro X3. Presently, other SoundForge versions are not compatible. At the bottom is a button to add in one or more paths to VST plugins. These need to be VST2 64-bit plugins. Back on the timeline, the waveform is now a half waveform, but the audio is still with the video because it was imported that way. I always work with video and audio on separate tracks. Since I imported these clips before changing the import parameters, right-click on the object and we see audio functions and then a listing of those functions. Select video audio on separate tracks, and the audio part goes to track 2. Both are grouped, and I usually keep them that way so that they will move together. But if you need to separate them, click on the ungroup button. I'll delete the audio. If I want it back, right-click on the audio, audio functions, and select restore original sound. The audio is back with the video clip. VPX has buttons in the track header to mute audio and to adjust the volume. MEP only has a mute button that will turn off both video and audio on the track. In MEP, with the object selected, right-click, Audio Functions, Video Audio on Separate Tracks. Now I can mute just the audio on track 2. In VPX only, under the pop-down, multi-language tracks can be defined. Before continuing, let's look at some sources of audio files. In the media pool, click on the audio tab and there may be some songs and sound effects if you downloaded them from the store. There are some free ones. I'll select the song and preview it. It shows up on the monitor 
but not as a waveform as the waveform only gets created upon import. I can trim before importing as usual. I'll drag a song onto track 5 so I have some music in the background. Under File, there's a possibility to import audio CD tracks. I don't have a CD inserted, so nothing shows up. Under the Media Pool, Import, under My Media, there is also audio under My Music, Slideshow Music, and Recordings. There's a handle at the lower middle of an object that has audio for adjusting the volume, even turning it off. Another way is to right-click on the audio object, set volume, and select a preset. If I right-click on the video part, as we saw before, there are audio functions and the list is basically the same as the one when right-clicking on the audio object. But I'll right-click on the audio part. At the top is normalized to set the maximum volume to zero decibels. In VPX only, there is normalize EBUR128. I already mentioned set volume. Then there is decrease volume, which brings up a dialog box for ducking or damping. Next is set audio video offset in case they are slightly out of sync. This brings up a dialog box. Next is adding a snap marker at the playback marker, and there's a menu to the right. The next one is audio cleaning that we'll come back to, followed by some effects echo reverb, time stretch resample, and more audio effects functions to load, save, reset, copy audio effects. We'll see these again later. Next are the standard copy paste cut delete commands. In VPX, the audio object can be added to the project temp folder. In MEP, the object can be saved as a take. Then there is BPM wizard, which we'll see later. Edit Wave externally will show up in the menu if the object is a WAV file or the audio part of a proxy file or the mixed down audio of a video object. We'll see this later. Next is Turn on and off the volume curve, effects that can have audio effects curves, and align other audio objects with this track, which is necessary for multicam editing. In VPX only, there are split stereo objects into mono objects and use left side or right side only. Then there is display and reset track curves, not object curves. You can set the object color and finally look at the object properties. Note that you can put audio and other objects on the same track, but it's not a good idea. I usually give a distinct color to the tracks that I want to have just audio on. Moving right along, there's a speaker button at the upper right of the timeline. Right click and you'll see no scrubbing, scrubbing one frame, etc. MEP is limited here. VPX has additional features for DVD audio tracks used mainly for making multi language DVDs. I'll get the video and audio on separate tracks for the other two objects. The shortcut is Control H. I'll trim a couple of the objects on the timeline, one at the end, the other at the beginning. You can make J and L cuts by holding down Alt and dragging the head or tail of the audio objects. You have to have some material to work with, which is why I trimmed the clips. You can record audio by going to File, Record Audio, or by clicking on the red Record button. Adjust the parameters and advanced parameters and record while playing back the video. Next is the mixer. Click on the mixer button to open it. You can extend the width to see more tracks or use the bottom horizontal scroll bar. There's a channel strip for each track plus the master strip. You have volume faders, pan knobs, solo and mute buttons for the track. Clicking on Solo here shows up in the track header as well. At the top, the FX button brings up the track effects window. You can use VST effects by clicking on the plus button. I'll close that. The automation button activates volume and panorama automation for the corresponding track. Turning on automation shows the track curves on the timeline for the track. When you play back, all movements of the pan or volume slider for that track will be recorded. 
Now you can see the points added to the green volume curve or the white pan curve on the track. These can be edited or overwritten. Just below are two effects send sliders. Moving one will turn on the corresponding effects track at the right of the mixer. There are only two available. The slider indicates how much of the track signal is sent to the effects channel. Click on the first effects button of the effects track and reverb is turned on by default. You can add more effects to each effects track. The last strip is the master channel. The effects button brings up the master audio effects rack and you can add more VST effects here with a plus button. The mastering button brings up the mastering suite effects. Double click on the 0.0, .0 at the bottom of the fader strip and you can type in a value. If you're using surround sound, you can see that the five speakers window replaces the panning knob on the tracks. Clicking on this brings up the surround editor. You can synchronize video objects using audio tracks along with audio recordings, all recorded at the same time. On a reference track, select the audio object or audio part of a video. On one or more other tracks, select the audio to be moved. With all selected, right click on the reference audio object, select Align with other audio objects on this track, and the audio objects along with their group video should be aligned. This is necessary for multicam editing to synchronize videos. There's a difference between VPX and MAP for fine-tuning audio alignment, especially if you're trying to align a separate audio file with a video image. In VPX, which uses a Samplitude engine, you can move the audio on the timeline by an infinitesimal amount, but in MAP, dragging the audio object moves it in increments of one frame. That's it for part one. If there are any topics in this part that you would like to see in more detail, please leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Now go on to part two.